How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. As you guys know, I've been trying to make a portable power station pay for itself and sometimes this takes too long, like 15 to 20 years or so, even with solar panels. So an ROI of 15 to 20 years doesn't make sense for most people, but this is exactly what you're doing if you buy a solar roof and also some batteries to go along with it. So essentially you're paying for that many years worth of electricity in advance. Sometimes no matter how you work out the math, it's not gonna break even no matter what you do. And this is the case for this EcoFlow Delta Max, but you know why people would buy such a thing. It's for emergency preparedness. Here in California, even though I think the electricity grid is pretty good, it's still susceptible to rolling blackouts depending on which location you live. And when that happens, it's nice to have a power backup to keep on running your refrigerator. And having something like this just kind of gives you peace of mind. And I like to thank EagleFlow for sending this to me so that now I have extra functionality in the house. This thing is not cheap. Let me just tell you how much it is. It's $2,400. You can use a $300 coupon in it. So it's still $2,100. That's a lot of money to pay for a portable power station. But as you guys know, I've reviewed other portable power stations before. And this is one of the best. It even has Wi-Fi and it charges incredibly fast. Let me show you guys. It uses this really, really thick cable. I'm gonna plug it in right here. You lift open the back and you can do slow charging or fast charging. Let's do really fast charging. At this rate, it can charge from an empty battery to a full battery in less than two hours. 1600 watts. This is kind of like a blow dryer. It's like really, really high energy that's going into this thing. Now, you know what this is good for. If you don't have solar and it's not charging fast enough, you can actually bring this to somewhere that does have electricity, plug it in, and you don't have to wait that long in order to fill this thing up. And then you bring it back home and then you can use electricity again. So in that sense, it's just really convenient to have it fast charge like this. You see these funny little connectors over here? This is for extra battery. You can add two more batteries of similar size, adding up a total of 6,000 watt hour. So three of these together and you can join them together like this. Of course, the main one is gonna have all the smarts, the Wi-Fi and all that. The other ones is just a dumb battery that gets connected to this main battery. You might say, hey, beat the bush, don't buy it, you don't need it. I think in most cases you don't need something like this. This is more like emergency preparedness. Are you a prepper type of person? Do you want to fully insure against every single possibility, including if the power goes down? In this house, I don't think I've ever seen the power go out for more than like 10 minutes or something. It might have happened once or twice in my life, but it's never happened, but that doesn't mean that it's never gonna happen, especially with all these forest fires going on, all these crazy global warming type of events. Yes, it has a whole bunch of USB ports, but those don't really matter in comparison to the high wattage stuff that comes out of the back end over here. These plugs are actually 20 amp ones. You see this little T here? It means really, really high current. You can plug like heating elements, like toasters or barbecue grills or like hair dryers to this. Let me demonstrate. Hair dryer. I'm gonna set it on hot and high. It's just as strong. I'll put 1600 watts. When I was using some of the lesser portable power station, I can hear this kind of struggling a little bit. It's like a little bit slower than when I was plugging it at home. But in this case, it sounds exactly the same, just as powerful. This is my grill. And I know for sure another portable power station had a hard time running this because I put a burger on it. It didn't cook it quite well, but let's see if it's gonna get the heating element red hot for this one. Plug it in. It should be on already. Right here, 1300 watts. We can probably visibly see it get red. Now the question is when the power goes out, how much do you want your electricity? Do you think you can take a shower and maybe not use a hair dryer? That won't feel as nice. This is kind of like a luxury. You can, you know, still cook stuff, although I say Cooking stuff with a barbecue is like kind of like a waste of battery power. There's probably more efficient ways to use a battery. Uh, minimize using toasters. Oh yeah, this is definitely getting a lot hotter than the other one. Look at that. It is red hot over here. 1,265 watts. I almost feel bad for the battery here. That I'm like taxing it so much. Let me unplug that. It's like, is this getting hot? Because this plug thing, it's getting a little bit warm here. And <laughs> this, is, this is really hot over here. 
Gonna microwave this for what, 35 seconds? You can see over there, 2000 watts, wow. I haven't seen this before. Using another power bank, it actually, you know, tops out at like 1600 watts, 1800 watts. So it's giving this microwave a little bit more oomph, a little bit more power actually. Three, two, one. Okay, so it went down. The battery actually went really crazy with the fan. It's like, ah, I'm outputting so much power. Turn on all the fans. Got my water here. The other day I was trying to pretend that the power is out and just exclusively use this power bank. So I connected to my light over here with my entertainment system. It can drive all that. It's only like two, 300 watts. But the surprising thing is with the full battery charge, it can drive my entire entertainment system with the lights and everything for over six hours. It's kind of like how much do you want the luxuries of life when you are cut off from the grid as you produce more electric cars, you're flowing all this electricity through the grid. The net increase of electricity usage, it's a lot more. When you charge your car, you essentially double the amount of electricity that you use. And this is part of the reason why the electric grid is having a harder and harder time because people are using so much electricity. Not just air conditioning or heating when you get home, people are charging their cars. So personally, although it's not happening very much in California, I see it happening more and more going forward as more adoption of electric cars comes in. With that in mind, I don't think it's like a deal breaker to absolutely not have electricity for maybe an hour or two. But if you go for an entire day, that might start to spoil some of your food in your refrigerator. I probably would be able to cook with charcoal, with some butane gas or whatnot. I probably would try to conserve my electricity from a power bank for like a laptop, for lights, for like a TV, because you can really chew through your portable power station really quickly in just like half an hour of barbecuing. You know, half of it is gone. Let me show you guys the app. Here's the app. I have a Delta Max in the app already that's connected to the Wi-Fi. 216 watt hours in here and you can monitor what's charging it. So checking out the input as I'm charging it at an incredible speed through the app over here. It says 1,247 watts right now, 1,400 watts. So it ramps up in like five, 10 seconds or so. At the top it says, it'll finish charging in 51 minutes. That's like 60% of the battery charge in 51 minutes. So roughly two hours full charge here. The solar that's going in, the AC that's going in, you can turn on and off the AC like so. You can turn on and off the 12 volt, on and off the USB in the front. I'm doing this all this remotely here. And then of course at the top you can see 70 degrees is the temperature of the battery and it's at 40% full right now. An interesting part of this is that you can go into settings and there's a lot of settings here and I updated the firmware recently. Charge, discharge level, like how high you wanna charge it if you want to take care of the battery a little bit and not charge it all the way. Or discharging all the way, it's kind of harsh on the battery. So if you wanna baby the battery a little bit, you want to minimize discharging it all the way to zero. There's an AC charge speed. You can change it 200, 300, all the way up to, whoa, 1800 watts over here. Car input, this is like up to 100 watts. You can charge it with your car, but that's relatively slow, right? 100 watts compared to 1800 watts. Do you want it to beep or not? Smart generator auto on and off. This is like a gasoline generator that you plug into this thing and that generator kind of looks like a box just like this and it's gonna start and stop the generator. So obviously you gotta put that outside. Unit timeout, screen timeout, AC timeout. So a lot of different little features that you can access from here. One thing that is fairly significant here, when I tried out their 220 watt panels, because I bought normal aluminum frame panels before and they say 100 watts, right? But when I stick it in the sun, I don't get quite 100 watts, like 70 watts or so. So the thing I'm surprised with is this 220 watt solar panel from EcoFlow. Check this out. I took a screenshot of it because I was so surprised. I got an input of 234 watts. So it's rare that it actually goes over its rated capacity of 220 watts, 234 watts. 
Now, of course, it was very, very sunny and I probably positioned it as optimally as I can. The way to do it with the solar panel is you have the sun facing this way and it's casting a shadow. And I've found that the easy way to do it is you just kind of move it up and down. And as you move it, the shadow at its longest is the optimal point. Let's say this is the edge of the shadow that it's casting, right? So if you go up, it's going to get bigger and bigger of a shadow. And then if you go up beyond a certain point, it gets smaller back, right? So you just kind of move it around until you see the biggest shadow that it casts. And then you know that it's catching as much sun as possible. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned a thing or two about generators in general. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.